In a fight during Dungeons and Dragons, you attack a monster by making two rolls. The first roll determines whether your attack hits or misses, and the second roll determines how much damage your successful attack causes. An attack roll always uses a 20-sided die, but different weapons use different damage dice. The stronger a weapon is, the better a combination of damage dice it uses. Damage dice are described as blank D blank, where the first number is how many dice you roll, and the second number is the type of dice you roll. D&D comes with a table that ranks the different strengths of damage dice. This table is handy if you're facing a choice between weapons to use, or if you ever find yourself enlarged or diminished in size. But how are these damage dice ordered? It's pretty clear that rolling 1d8 is better than rolling 1d6 because it has a higher maximum. But what makes 4d6 better than 3d8 if they both have a maximum of 24? The simple rule is damage dice are ranked to produce higher damage more consistently. To visualize how this works, we'll look at some histograms. These histograms will show us the possible damage of a dice roll and the number of times out of 100 rolls we would expect to get each amount of damage. The histogram shows you the history of what happens over many rolls. So, for example, if your damage dice is 1d6, you can expect to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 damage with equal probability about 17% each. If your damage dice is 1d4, you can expect to get 1, 2, 3, or 4 damage with equal probability, 25% each. Rolling 1d6 of damage is clearly better than rolling 1d4 because you can get two values higher than is even possible with a 1d4 and the probability of getting minimum damage is lower. The 1d6 clearly produces higher damage over time, illustrating the first half of our rule. It's easy to see that the same pattern holds if you upgrade your damage dice to 1d8, 1d10, or 1d12. But the pattern is more difficult to see when you come across comparisons like 2d4 versus 1d8. It's analogous to the question of which would you rather fight, one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? Both damage dice have the same maximum value, but they produce very different histograms. 1d8 produces a flat histogram like we've seen before, with 12.5% probability of obtaining each result. Meanwhile, 2d4 produces a histogram with a peak at a result of 5 and the same maximum damage of 8. At first glance, it might look like the 1d8 is better, because it has a higher probability of rolling maximum damage but 2d4 is ranked higher on the damage table. This brings us to the second half of the answer, higher damage more consistently. 2d4 rolls more consistently than 1d8 for two reasons. First, 2d4 rolls a minimum of two, while 1d8 rolls a minimum of one, so you're already guaranteed a twice as good worst case scenario. Second, 2d4 has a higher probability of rolling its average damage. The histogram for 2d4 is more concentrated, while the histogram for 1d8 is more spread out. So it looks like we have a corollary to our rule. More smaller dice is better than fewer larger dice. Let's see whether this trend holds if we were to instead roll 4d2. A two-sided die is a coin that flips between 1 and 2. As with the others, this dice combination produces the same maximum of 8, with a lower probability of rolling maximum damage, but the real comparison is in the shape of the histogram. It has a minimum damage of only 4, is even more concentrated than the 2d4, and has a higher average roll. So again, more smaller dice is better than fewer larger dice. In fact, you can take this scenario to the extreme and consider rolling 8d1. A one-sided die is a Mobius strip labeled 1 that always rolls its maximum damage of 1, meaning 8d1 will always result in its maximum damage of 8, with a probability of 100%. Now that's higher damage with more consistency. So today we've looked at damage dice in D&D and seen that the key to improving your weaponry is achieving more damage with higher consistency, which usually means rolling a greater number of smaller dice. Hello and thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to investigate other dice combinations, you can do so using the Python code available in the description below, which also includes an introductory video about how this code was made. If you find an interesting or unexpected result, please leave a comment below or tweet us at Let's Code Physics. Now, my regular viewers will note that this video is a little afield from my usual topics. It's been a fun project to work on and I'd like to work on similar topics in the future. Let me know what you think in the comments below or on Twitter. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.